learn about how we can use the InfluxDB 3.0 C-Sharp Client Library. This is part of the Client Library series, and it's brought to you by InfluxDB University. InfluxDB University offers free live and self-paced training on a variety of topics, including InfluxDB v3, Telegraph, Client Libraries, Data Science Tools, Power BI, Business Intelligent Tools, Tableau, um, so much more. Uh, not all of those courses have actually been released yet, but they're in the progress, so they'll be available shortly. And when you take any course as a part of InfluxDB University, you're rewarded with a badge that you can display on your LinkedIn to uh, highlight what you've learned. But for today, we'll be focusing on the InfluxDB v3 C Sharp Client Library, the requirements that you need in order to actually use it, how to write data to InfluxDB v3 with it, how to query data with it as well, and then additional resources and places where you can get help uh, to learn more about uh, this client library and others. So what is the InfluxDB v3 C Sharp Client Library? Well, it's a package that provides a set of tools and functions for interacting with InfluxDB v3 using the C-sharp programming language. And what it does is it allows um, developers to efficiently query and write time series data to and from InfluxDB, and that therefore in turn simplifies the integration of InfluxDB into any C-sharp applications that you might have. So some of the advantages that come with this client library are the following. The first is that it wraps the Apache Arrow C Sharp uh, flight client in a convenient InfluxDB v3 interface, and that allows you to execute SQL queries against your InfluxQL, uh, InfluxDB instance, as well as InfluxQL queries. So um, you can do that against any InfluxDB cloud instance, for example. And another benefit is that the Apache Arrow flight client uh, uses this flight protocol with gRPC, and it also uh, uses the Arrow format for that. So essentially, um, you can take advantage of all the efficient serialization and deserialization and bidirectional streaming that the Arrow flight client provides. Um, and with those benefits and with those tools, just comes the ability to transport really large data sets over network interface incredibly efficiently. And how the C-Sharp client works essentially is that writes are implemented via the write API endpoint. This has been the same for every version of InfluxDB, and you write points with the line protocol format. Uh, queries, however, are implemented via the Apache Arrow flight client, and like I said, they utilize that Arrow format and the flight gRPC protocol. So the requirements. What you'll need is an InfluxDB Cloud uh, v3 account, and then you'll need to go ahead and create a database and also get an authentication token. A database is also known as a bucket. They're the same thing. Um, so let's actually take a look at how we do that. Basically, in order to create a database or a bucket, we go to this left-hand navigation, and then we click Buckets, go to the Buckets page. Then we can click Create Bucket, give our bucket a name, and then include any data retention preferences, how long we want to keep that data around for. And we have a bucket. Next, we can go to the API Tokens page, click Generate API Token, and go ahead and name that API token whatever we want, copy it to Clipboard, and success, we have both our bucket and our token, which are pretty much the only requirements. So now let's talk about installation. So you're going to just need to add the latest version of the client to your project, uh, as so. And now let's talk about how we can write data. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to start the client, you're going to have to import the InfluxDB3.client package and then create an InfluxDB client uh, with a constructor initializer. And then from there, um, we also want, when we construct that uh, client, we're also going to want to provide our host or the URL that our, our cloud account is on, and then our token and our database. So now if we want to write data to InfluxDB, one way that we can do that is to write data with um, by using points data, and that will actually help us generate points that then we can then pass into write point async to actually write that point to InfluxDB. And it's also important to note that you can append points to an array and pass that array into points async and write multiple points as well. So here's an example of that. Basically, in this example, we're saying we want a measurement or a table name of temperature. We want a tag, add tag, or a column of location with the value equal to west and a field of value with the actual field value as well as a timestamp. 
and then we can just pass that point directly um, into uh, the right points async function, and we congratulations, we've written a point. We can also write line protocol data to InfluxDB as well. So the way that we're going to do is use the write records async as well and just simply pass in our lines of line protocol instead. So here we first construct a record. Um, so essentially, the, previously that point essentially will just generate this line protocol. It's a wrapper for it. Um, but here we go. We are have our temperature, location, and value, and then we pass that record into uh, the right record async. Now, an important note about InfluxDB v3. The first is that measurements should just be thought of as tags, uh, as tables, excuse me, tables in any sort of SQL table. And fields and columns are essentially the same. They all get turned into columns uh, in a table. But that being said, there are some important notes about upserts. So you can upsert a field, but not a tag. For example, if you add a second point, so we'll, we'll just write two different points of line protocol where they'll be exactly the same, except we'll change the field value from 60 to 60.02. So we're just tagging on an extra two to the end of the field. If we do this, what will happen is that we will overwrite our previous point with the new field value. However, this is not the case for tags. So uh, instead, when we um, you know, change this tag value from location equals north to location equals north two, we would be simply adding more tag values. We're not going to um, actually have an upsert here. So yes, tags convert to columns um, and so do fields, uh, but fields get uh, upserted and tags do not. Now let's talk about how we can query data. Well, we can query data with SQL, and here's an example of how we would do that. Basically, we first need to um, create our SQL statement. So we'll say like select time location value from that measurement temperature or that table temperature, and maybe we'll order it by time and limit it to the first 10 values. And then we can go um, ahead and use the query method to query that and pass in our SQL query. And similarly, we can query with InfluxQL as well. In this instance, the code is the exact same, except we specify an InfluxQL query instead of a SQL query. And we use for our query type uh, InfluxQL instead of SQL as well. Now, finally, I wanted to talk about some resources and places where you can get additional help. So full code examples for writing different record types, line protocol or points, and querying with both SQL and InfluxQL can be found in the URL here. Um, all of the client libraries for v3 are within the Influx community organization on GitHub. Um, and that org is a fantastic place to get all sorts of examples for how to use InfluxDB with a wide variety of other technologies. So if you want demos on how to use InfluxDB with OpenTelemetry and Jaeger and Grafana, go there. Or maybe um, one where you build some sort of anomaly detection pipeline with Quix. Uh, again, examples for that, there's IoT demos. All the client libraries are maintained there as well, so you can find examples, um, full code examples for how to use those there as well. Highly recommend checking out that resource. And like I mentioned, all the client libraries are, meant, are maintained there, so not only can you find specific code examples like basically we talked about today, but also um, you can find everything related to this client library at Influx Community slash Influx CB3 slash C Sharp. And last but not least, I really want to encourage you to uh, join some community resources so that you can reach out and ask any questions that you might have when you come across them. The first is our Slack channel at influxdata.com slash Slack. Um, there's also the forums. You can ask questions there, community.influxdata.com. There is our Influx community organization as well on GitHub. Go check that out. I've already talked about that. Our docs are fantastic, stocks.influxdata.com. And we also have blogs where we share tutorial examples in written format of, you know, how to use different client libraries and how to do a variety of different tasks and build a variety of different applications within FluxDB. And then to get started, you can feel free to scan the QR code here um, and create a InfluxDB cloud account and try this all for yourself. Use a free tier and get going. 
Thank you so much for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you join us for another video in the future.